Let the dirt! And welcome to a brand new episode of Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Hello, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. That's my partner. He's over there. I pointed the wrong way. And uh, my name is John Polnick. I am here in the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas. Come and visit us sometime if you're in the neighborhood. All right. If you're new to this channel, what we do is we find the most interesting car of the day from all the auction sites. We have a conversation about that car. And then we make a prediction as to what will happen with that car's auction results and then we go into the future at the episode and we marry our predictions with the actual results and show how wrong we always are so, uh, <laughs> that's what makes it interesting though because you can play along in the comments you can put your bid what do you think will happen with this car's results you can play along and see if you are better at this than we are uh shout out to our good friends at god and porsche of las vegas they support yes. the show, and we support them thank and you we ask that you do the same all right hit the subscribe like and notification button and michael deeb without further ado Ooh. what is Look the at this. most interesting car of the day today all right, John, our friends, uh, the Porsche people that put on the marked auction platform have sourced for our viewing pleasure this 1998 Lotus Esprit V8. Uh, if you um, wrap your brain around this, John, the Esprit came out in the 70s with a normally aspirated four-cylinder engine. Um, beautiful wedge design and really turned heads. Super exotic looking. Uh, then the a little bit later, the Esprit got turbochargers, made a cameo in a couple of Bond movies. You remember that submarine that drove up the beach with Roger Moore was an Esprit Turbo. And then there was another Esprit Turbo, a red one, uh, that famously had a uh, security sticker on it. And the bad guy tried to put a machine gun through the window to break in the car, and the car blew up, <laughs> which was really funny. But this car... Lotus just kept building this car. 20 years later, John, they were still making it, and they finally upgraded it with a twin-turbo V8 that made about 350 horsepower. And what was interesting, John, I, I don't know about you. This is purely subjective. But I actually think this car still looked good in the 90s. Um, I thought that the upgrades they did with the wings and the spoilers were subtle enough that the original wedge design was still preserved, but the car looked modern, especially with the bigger wheels and tires. Um, and that big, huge wing on the back. Now, uh, see if you can remember this. My uncle, my father's brother, sold Volkswagens in uh, San Mateo County while I was in high school. And um, at that time, the Volkswagen dealership was part of an auto group, and they had a Lotus franchise in there. Uh, so we would go visit my uncle at work, and of course, I would leave the Volkswagen lot and run over to the showroom where the Lotuses were. Uh, and so if you can imagine, John, Lotus Esprit was part of my uh, fantasy back then in high school. It was a car, like a, like a dream car that I always wanted. And so in the 90s, when I was in my 20s, this V8 twin turbo was so exotic and so out of this world. I've always had a soft spot for him. Uh, our car is offered to us, John, out of, uh, let me read this to you really quickly. It is in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and shows just 13,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, Calypso Red is the colorway here. The owner spent $10,000 uh, last year servicing the car, getting everything um, up and running and up to date uh, with fresh fluids and rubber and all the things you would expect if you were going to enjoy the car or bring it to market. Um, you know, not a lot of fanfare here. These cars were built in very, very small numbers. Um, there's not a lot of support. I don't know where you would even begin to look for a uh, Lotus uh, mechanic, somebody that knew these cars, somebody that might still be wrenching on a sprees that wrenched on them when they were new, uh, would be super, super niche in this country. They just didn't bring a lot of them here. So if you took a car on like this, I think you're not taking a risk, but you'd really have to be comfortable with um, having um, some support to keep a car like this on the road. But man, they look uh, exotic. They still look uh, wild even today. I think that the design has aged really well. And this car looks to be pretty spectacular. So, JP, I've never driven one. I have no experience behind the car. Just as a fanboy, I've always loved them. I, th I think they did a really good job continuing to keep this car on the road with 
more power and more technology while preserving the design and not ruining its original shape. Um, similarly to what you could say the Porsche did with the 911, uh, Lotus really um, you know, doubled down and then tripled down on this design and kept building it until finally uh, it couldn't keep up with the competition. But these are going to wind up being a lot of car for the money because they don't bring exotic car money. They don't bring supercar money. These are still relatively affordable. The caveat is then you're going to run into scary and sometimes impossible maintenance costs, finding parts, finding technicians, um, and finding the money in your own wallet or couch to keep a car like this on the road. So, JP, I send this Lotus Esprit back to you and ask you, because uh, I can't remember the answer. Have you ever driven one of these? Have you driven any year Esprit? Uh, does somebody you know personally ever own one? Because I have no firsthand experience with this car other than I just loved looking at them and, you know, always wanted my uncle to give me one for a birthday present, which, of course, never happened. But, man, I made that wish hard when I blew out the candles in high school. Uh, what do you think? What do, you, do you know anything about these cars more than I do? When I got my first job selling cars, like back in 1990 or something, I dropped out of art school and I uh, had to go make a living somehow. So I always thought it'd be cool to, to sell cars, which... I don't know why I thought that would be cool, um, but I worked at a little pot lot, you know, the, the uh, one of those car lots on that street that every city has with all the piece of junk yep. cars that were trade-ins at the nicer dealership. Uh, the the dealership or the the ownership group of cars that uh, uh, that supplied the cars to the little dealership that I worked at happened to also own a Porsche Mark, a Volvo Mark, a Cadillac, Toyota, a couple others, and they also owned a Lotus uh, franchise. So yes, I did get to drive a Lotus back then. Uh, I was 19. I was an idiot. I can't, I couldn't believe they gave me the keys. And the one thing I noticed was, uh, it's funny looking at this picture. There's a great picture looking through that back window. Um, it was yeah. described in like car and driver or motor trend or something like that back then when people actually read car magazines, uh, trying to see out of the back of this thing was like trying to see out of a, a bunker slit, you know, for a machine gun. In World War II. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he World was absolutely one, yeah. right. Yeah. God yeah. forbid you had to back up in one of these things because there were no backup cameras. Um, right. That said, you know, and that was 1990s. And the you know these were super popular because of Pretty Woman. Um, you know oh, I think right. Pretty Woman yeah, did more for this go. car and kind of kept its legs than James Bond maybe even. And then I think there was one in like uh, uh, what's that guy from Twenty One Jump Street uh, Booker whatever he uh, he had that silly movie <laughs> License to Kill or something. He had a red one. I, it, that one may have been a six cylinder or an eight cylinder one. I don't know. I can't remember. I've yeah. never driven one of these eight cylinder ones. I liked. The four, I've driven a handful of the four cylinder ones. They don't handle as well as one would like. Uh, but that set, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a Porsche 928, you know, um, <sighs> I've driven a million Porsche 928s, but I think in my entire life, I've only ever driven one that was like, oh, this is a nice car. Because most of them, you know, when I drove them were cheap versions of the 928, ones that were beat up right. and trashed. Uh, I think the same goes for these. These weren't very expensive for a long time. And consequently, they just got trash. So I've only, you know, I got to drive that new one back in the day and loved it, but I didn't really have yeah. much to go on. I mean, I drove a 914 back then, so I didn't, I didn't have, <laughs> you know, the, uh, I'd driven like 300 Z's and stuff like that as a lot punk in, in, and I knew what those were like, but I really didn't know how to drive or what to, how to compare it. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I would love to get behind the wheel of an eight cylinder one like this one that's in good condition, uh, and, and really, yeah. nice, but it's like, and I got to think it wouldn't take much if there were any problems with it, if it's too soft or whatever. Well, luckily those things are easy to mod. Um, because I think it's yeah, one of totally. the greatest looking sports cars of all time. I really think, you know, in the era of the 355 Ferrari, uh, or, you know, this was out when the 348 was out. Uh, this is a better looking car than a 348. What do you, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I mean the 348 is so distinctly pinned in Farina and and so uh, period correct. Um, you know the thing that's interesting about this uh, Gugario design. You know this is the guy that did your Lamborghini and Lancia Stratos and I think even your Scirocco and stuff like that. Um, uh, lost I camera, really Mike. appreciate the Mike. We lost your my, camera. Oh, she's okay. Stand by, everyone. Michael Deeb uh, doesn't know how to keep I'm track up. of his cameras here. Uh, let's see here. I'm All up. Right, so there he is. He's I'm back. back. There we go. Yeah. But um, 
I like this design and I like the original one from like whatever year it came out, 74, 77 or something. The, the original wedge with the, with the big bumpers. Um, they're, they're like the design aged really well. And I just, I love the way the car looks. So, um, but yeah, it's, it is prettier than a 348. 348 looks, um, with those side strikes, like again, it's, it's evocative of an era, but it still looks kind of pretentious where this car um, has a beauty and it's a, it's a bit more organic a shape. I, I do. I really love the way the car looks and I've always wanted to drive one. So one of these days. All right. Well, what do you guys think of this, uh, this uh, Lotus and Michael Deeb, what do you think it's going to sell for? So JP, our car is on the marked platform that's run by Porsche. And, and so I, I do think we have to take the platform into consideration here. This is a really great car. Um, it rare by the build numbers and certainly um, rarer still when you consider it has only 13,000 miles on it. This is a car that I, I definitely, before I even see the result, I would think that the guy could be leaving money on the table by not bringing it to bring a trailer. Uh, but Mark has surprised us from time to time. But this is really uh, an off-brand even for the Porsche-owned site called Marked. So it's sitting at $40,000 on three bids. I think this is a, you know, 80-something thousand dollar example with the low miles. Uh, but with the Mark platform, JP, I'm going to be a bit more pragmatic and say that the car brings $65,000. Uh, and I'm not sure if if that's where, if I'm correct and it's, it sort of stalls out at that number. Um, I don't know if it transacts for that, you know, like, because to me, I think this is a 75 to $85,000 car. So if it, if it stops at 65, which is what I think is going to happen here, um, it may not meet its reserve. Does that make sense? So I'm going to send it to you, you at 65. Where are you getting the 80,000? Have we seen these go for that? Have you, did you do some research? Yeah. And see them go yeah. A little bit. Mm. Yeah. And, and what, if you can believe it, JP, we've had a couple cars transact, um, for over a hundred thousand wow. dollars with, with, with like basically no miles, you know, like mm -hmm. 2000 mile examples. Mm. So, um, they, they can bring big money. And again, this car with the V8 and, it's an attractive color. It's not the color I would want, but it's an attractive color with the silver wheels and the black interior. Like somebody didn't F this up by getting some weird color. Um, I, you know, this car has a shot uh, and that'd be great if it does. If it brings a retail number, it should be in the high 80s. But um, but I think I think it's going to go, I think it's going to sort of fizzle at 65 and there's a chance that 65 might not be where the reserve is set. So that's what I'm going to send to you, 65,000 bucks, John. Yeah, I mean, I think if they've gone for some big money, that was, you know, the last summer numbers, uh, you know, when yeah, we saw that's true. crazy, crazy high stuff and people were buying everything because the stuff that everyone really wanted was crazy expensive. I think with prices of things like an E30 M3 and all kinds of other cars coming down to more reasonable prices, I think this is going to get lost. I don't think anyone's going to care about it. I mean, this is just not a sought after car. I like it. We both like this car. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think at this point that the, that you know there's a lot of competition for that money right now and i'm gonna say 55 i think it stalls out i, I think there's no wow. way in hell this thing gets to 65 i think it's a great car but look this car you know we've seen we've seen cars you know with some pretty big appreciation curves over the last couple of years cars that weren't paid attention to this car was a twenty five thousand dollar car for a long yeah. time um, true. we've seen nine, six, four numbers go way high. Right. But yeah. they popped years ago, <laughs> you know, they, they, <laughs> they used to be $25,000 cars too, but this was a, you know, $15,000 car at the time. The, you know, well, maybe not the V eights. I mean, the V eights were the last of them. There weren't that many. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel think, like the, the, the cheap dip on the V eights was like in the 30, $35,000 range. Um, but you got to think they're they're worth more than double than that now if they're in spectacular condition. And this one looks really nice. You know, it's it's not cosmetically beat up and it's got low miles. So it, it's all sort of congruent. Yep. All right. What do you guys we'll think? See. Uh, let us know in the comments below. We sure love seeing your bids. Shout out to all our great fans, the nerd <laughs> herd out there, you know, church house and family guy and all the people, Ross, Ross and uh, I don't know who Buddha. else, uh, Buddha. And if we're, if I'm forgetting, I don't have it in front of me. I, I really need to like start looking at the names of all the guys that, that regularly comment. We really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for participating. It's way more fun doing the show when we see your bids uh, and we and we see that, okay, yeah, you guys are better at this. Maybe you should make a show, uh, but that's more fun for us. Uh, it's great. Uh, and man, sometimes 
I got to tell you, Deeb, it's, it's all, you know, yeah. we, we do this show where we do the first half and we kind of, we talk about what we know about the car. Uh, and yeah. then we go in the future and we talk about the results. And then unfortunately the way we make the show, then we publish the show after the results and then we get the comments. And sometimes the comments are so good that I wish we could go back and redo the show because it's like, man, that, that's a take <laughs> I didn't think of, or that's, that's information <laughs> that I just, I wish we could have shared in the actual show. So if you're watching this episode uh, and you're going, man, these guys don't know anything about uh, this car, this Lotus, the chances are you're right. We don't, um, but I bet someone in the comments does. So if you want to see the real smarts, uh, watch the whole video, see if we know what we're talking about. And when you realize that we don't read the comments below and, um, you know, be part of that because that's, uh, the show goes on after the fact. So, all right. Uh, in just about 30, 60 seconds, we're going to be uh, a week in the future and we will show you exactly what happened with the results of this uh, really cool car. This, uh, what is this? Uh, what, what the heck is uh, spree, a Lotus spree. A spree. I'm so excited about our fans that I forgot all about the car. All right. <laughs> stick around with this, uh, for this word and we'll be right back. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend, Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you got to check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, 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 this car. I am driving a 2020 Lamborghini SVJ. This car, watch this. Oh. 115 mile an hour turn, like, like it's nothing. And we're back from the future, from the past. It's the future now. I don't know how that works. I'm not very bright, but you all know that if you're a fan of the show. And if you're a fan of the show, we do appreciate you. If you're not a fan of the show, if you're new to the show, hit subscribe, like, and notification button right now if you haven't already. Okay, did you guys plug in your bids before the break? Um, I'm noticing a trend, Deep. Have you noticed this? Yeah. Uh, people, not only are they putting their bids in. <laughs> then they're they, reacting to their to the result. Well, that's true too. That's something yeah, else, yeah. but that's not what I was going to mention. What, what oh, yeah, that's what I thought you were going to mention. Is there that there are, there's a certain amount of people out there that are putting their bids in and they're really, look, look these are, these are, you're a man among, among men. These guys who not only do they put their bid, but they put the minute mark that they put oh, their bid on. That's awesome. So yeah, they're yeah. proving that they did it before <laughs> the break. And our hats off to you, gentlemen. Yes, uh, yes. And ladies, if any of you are doing it, um, that is strong, man. The minute, you are playing minute we have the game. To we have to incorporate minute mark badging on the bid nerd swag, you know, yeah. like, like that would be pretty funny. So calling it anyway. like, if you, if you come in, right, yeah. like you see the thumbnail and you're like, oh, okay, here's a car. I'm going to bid before these guys even talk about it. That's a, you know, yeah. bid at like a minute, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> before either of our opinions. Uh, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. So anyways, right. we appreciate you guys playing along. It's fun, right? I mean, it's like the price yes. is right, but nobody wins anything. Um, we've got to get some <laughs> swag for all you guys. We promise it's going to happen. Uh, all right, well, let's get to the results of this uh, really cool car. This uh, we, A lot of red cars this week. What are we talking JP, about? What happened can, with this Lotus? You, you smell that? I smell a Yahtzee alert. Oh, my mm, God. Check it out. John, our car failed to sell on marked. I said 65000 You said 55000 Our car failed to sell at $54,000 on 22 bids. So a couple of points I think are being made here. One. I thought the car was a really beautiful example, and they're not very common. You know, they only made a few of these uh, Lotus Esprit V8s. Um, I thought that this car might just be a little too niche for the marked platform, um, which is still, I think, in its infancy, right? They've only been live for like a little over a year, if, if that. Um, this is a car, I think, in this colorway with fair miles and, uh, and nice condition, I think should have been on a, a, a slightly more prominent platform. Um, you know, these days, I wouldn't be surprised if this car did well on P car or cars and bids. 
but I really think that the retail money for this vehicle would have been on bring a trailer. And so I feel like uh, perhaps the uh, consigner should have considered that before he went to the Mark platform. It, it's not a knock on Mark. They're just still growing. It's, it's too soon to be this niche on that platform. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so, but JP, your guess was right on the money. This car came in a thousand under your bid. You won that one. What do you think of the car? What do you think it might take on this being the wrong platform for, uh, you know, a, 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 a British supercar? I mean, that, that that doesn't even sound like it makes sense. It's like decaf espresso. You know what I'm saying? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I really like this car. The more I look at the photos, I'm just going, yeah. God, man. A great I, shot. Know, That's a great more, shot yeah, back there. Really the last is. one with the sun. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think it, hurt, it got hurt by the platform for sure. Uh, but that said, I just don't think these are that popular. I don't think the rising tide on all the collector stuff uh, was enough to bring this heavy car up to the surface of mm -hmm. where prices uh, have kind of climbed. Um, we've talked, you know, I talk all the time about inflation and I think this car is one that's because of its relative obscurity is uh -huh. just not going to survive uh, any kind of like correction in the market. Is there a correction in the market? I don't know. Um, you know, we should know we're watching it kind of real time. It's happening. Yeah. It's absolutely happening. It, yeah. You know, prices are coming down, but they're not plummeting. And, right. But values Which was, are. Yeah. That was your take over a year ago. You yeah. said, Michael, watch like, Two. like yeah. uh, values are going to fall, but money might not because it costs more. And, and so anyway, you explained that to our viewers and you've been you've been pounding the table about that and we're sort of seeing that you know this car kind of flatlined at fifty four thousand. the thing that i thought was interesting you know we covered this car and then um i decided to run out and find that 348 ferrari that you compared it to from both an era and a design standpoint design language you know the this car being the gagario design and the 348 being pin and farina design the ferrari despite needing service Found a home at sixty-four thousand dollars on BAT. The Ferrari had a little over fifty thousand miles. This Lotus has about forty thousand miles. So the, you know the condition, the era, the performance—it's all suspect. They're all pretty, pretty. They're, they're, they're kind of running in the same pack. If that makes any sense. JP, this car failed to sell at fifty fifty-four thousand. So you might think that the retail number might be close to that Ferrari. So if we're talking similar money and similar paint color, which of the two cars would you rather have? The, the convertible 348 um, or uh, a coupe Lotus that is super rare that, you know, that's the car a lot of people would probably walk up to to take a look at because they, they probably can't remember the last time they've seen one of these in person because they're just so unusual even in the United States. It's a tough call because, you know, they both have V8s, they're both mid-engines, they're both bright red, all those things. But yeah. I've never driven one of these in a V8. I've you yeah, know, I, I. said over the, over the break that I've driven a bunch of the four cylinder ones and they're snappy and they're fun. But I mean, I, I don't remember the driving experience being anywhere near what a 348 can offer. Um, uh -huh. But having a bunch of torque on one might be a different story. I, I just Absolutely. don't know. You know, and the other thing too is I don't remember the transmission on the, um, on the Lotus cars that I've driven being very good. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, or at least you know. Look, I've driven some old Ferraris that were a handful to try to you know find the gear <laughs> even with that gate. Um, but you know, three forty eights, the three forty eights that I've driven have been just glorious. I mean that that <laughs> shifting that gated pattern in a three forty eight is wonderful. Really, really uh, fun. Yeah. It's so so satisfying, right? Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, on a Lotus, I, you know, a modern Lotus, the Elises, and and I got I got to drive the what's the brand new one, not the Evora, but the the um the Mira uh they oh. brought well, they brought one to town here oh in right Las you Vegas. brought me I to drive one I was yeah I loved it you know it was great yeah. you know, that was a lot that of fun cars. car that but I can't imagine that's anything like this big heavy no. V8 and, you know this platform the Amira or the Mira you can tell is a super lightweight kind of like yeah. the Elise and all that generation of Lotuses so I don't know I I, I guess it would have to be you know that's definitely one of those situations where you got to test drive the car. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny talking about a test drive on a car on a, on a platform like this. Uh, our good friend, Chef William over at uh, Auto Fest, my partner Chef! over there, uh, you know, great guy. Um, he is actively looking for an air-cooled 911. He found one on BAT that he's probably looking, watching right now. But, you know, oh, wow. he, he's not going to buy it because um, it, it, the car... 
was out in Lake Havasu, which is about two and a half hours away from where we are in Las Vegas. And uh-huh. we reached out to the seller on Saturday to see if we could arrange to go and look at it on Sunday. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, the guy calls me back. Right. And so I was the one that reached out, you know, chef didn't reach out. I was the one that reached out and I get this curmudgeon guy, you know, sounds like an (laughs) octogenarian. He's like, yeah, (laughs) sorry to bug you, dude. I'm like, Hey, uh, we're up in Vegas. We're thinking of maybe coming down and looking at the car and maybe test driving. No, no, nobody's test driving this thing unless you line my pockets with a with a ton of cash. I'm just oh like, wow! It was almost like he was suggesting that he'd sell it outside of the auction or whatever. I'm just like, well, yeah, we're we're interested in bidding in the car, but there's some questions we have on it. You know, he's like, yeah. well, the engine's only got 300 miles on it. It's fine. I'm like, okay, has it been broken? In? Did you read the ad? I'm like, honestly, no, I didn't read the ad, buddy. Uh, you I know, called I'm, you. I yeah. called you. I, you know, I'm trying to talk to you about it. And he's like, I oh, sold Harleys for 20 years. And, and he starts dropping F-bombs about, you know, I, you know let, some, let somebody test drive a brick. I'm like, okay, you know what? Happy bidding. Thanks. And I just hung up on the guy. Um, you know, he wasn't even listening to what I was saying anyway. Uh, Clearly. And I went on, I went on BOT Clearly. and actually, you know, wrote up. I said, this is my experience with this guy, you know, proceed yeah. with caution and uh yeah so it's a really cool car with some weird some weird stuff but is your is your comment still up or did they take it down I just uh, it was it's, it, it was up as of last night i don't know if it's yeah. still there um and and what year because i wasn't car disrespectful i was very yeah. uh yeah. it was i want to say it was a 77 911 hot rod um okay. quite a bit i mean like we're talking all the mods, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, kind of RSR front and rear bumpers, wider fenders, not the full wide, wide body. Yeah. Um, but like Carrera, if I, you know, it's not yeah. a narrow body anymore, but he, you know, it was like fiberglass fenders. Um, it was a full complete tear down respray from, you know, every Jeez. nut and bolt was taken off. It, it was pretty exhaustive, but it had like really terrible, like two, uh, 2000 era, you know, 18 inch, Wheels that just looked ridiculous, and like the the body gaps were a little off, you know. Oh boy! And, you know, so it was like this car, you know, the engine's got the you know the forty eight millimeter PMOs. With, you know, it, it looks awesome, but then you look closer and you're like, yeah, some of these details are weird. It was the kind of car that yes, I would absolutely consider buying, but I have to see it and have to drive it. But yeah. it was very clear that this guy was not interested in letting anyone drive it maybe he'd let someone see it, but you know, okay, great. That's going to be fun with this guy. So, you know, that's the problem with some of these auction sites is that, I mean, on a hot rod car, you want to be able to drive the the thing and experience what it's actually like. If it's something that's more of a commodity, something like this Lotus where it's all stock, it looks like it's not, I mean, it's, if you know these cars, you know what that driving experience is going to be like. If you've been in the one, but if it were a complete, tear down, rebuild, totally modded. You have no idea what the driving, you have no idea what it's like to drive them because they're all different when you mod them. So true. Anyways. All, all right, right, guys. What do you well, think listen, of the results? Oh, go ahead. You have one more thing yeah, you want to say. Just, what do you got? I, just again about the platform with this Lotus Esprit. I think if you have a car with a broad appeal, the Mark platform is still a good place to bring your car. Um, if you want a more boutique experience as the consigner, you know, you're going to get, I think treated really well. And, uh, and I think they'll get your car up right away, which is a, which is a bonus, right? That, that, that'll help. And I do think Mark uh, will bring a retail number. If your car has a broad appeal and it checks all the boxes. In other words, th- there's no hidden issues, but this Lotus um, it's a bummer that it failed to sell. Cause it's a beautiful car. That's a car I would certainly consider owning it. I agree with you, JP. The more I look at this thing, the more I love the, all the details on it. Um, but this car, the bid goes on. It's probably going to wind up in a classified somewhere. So I think anyway, this would have been the on. perfect car for Doug DeMiro to try to sell on yeah. Cars and Bids because Cars and Bids is getting so much more attention because of oh, all the uh, all We're going to talk about that this week. Yeah, so I think this car would have probably made your number there without a problem. Maybe even would have been better on Cars and Bids than bring a trailer. Um, yeah. because it's a slightly weirder audience over there on cars and bids. Uh, so what do you true. guys think of the results of this Lotus? Uh, is this a, uh, is a Lotus a car that you'd consider over a 348 or lots of other, I mean, heck at these prices at $65,000, I don't know about you, D, but I think I'd rather have this Lotus than an SC at the uh, prices that SCs are going for. I mean, that'd be a really cool exotic car to have in the garage, yeah, especially if you had more than one car. 
Um, if you already have an air cold 911, this would be a great car to have next to it. Um, let us know in the comments below, guys. What do you think of this Lotus? Is this car you'd want? Um, if you have you driven one of the V8s, tell us about it because I I still haven't driven one. There's one that shows up to a lot of the car shows here in Las Vegas, uh, and I keep meaning to talk to the guy and maybe see if we could drive it sometime. Maybe put it on the Rami show or something. But uh, that'd be cool. Review on it. Um, all right. Well, hit the subscribe, like, and notification button if you haven't done it already. And uh, go check out our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas and uh, check out their inventory if you like looking at really pretty cars. They've got lots of them. And we will see you on tomorrow's episode of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Bye. Nerds! Get those words!